Hi, welcome back to CVEM 305. Uh, we were talking about torsion last class. We are going to talk today about four major items. First item, we need to understand what is actually meant by the shear strain due to torsion. So that is item number one and how the calculation for shear strain works. Second thing is, what is the meaning of this uh, relationship between angle of twist and the torque and how to think about it. Third thing is how to use these things in, uh, in, in more complicated shapes. Okay, So those are the four things that we are going to learn. In order to do that, we are going to start with an experiment so that you can see what these angles of twist and what the shear strain and so on like that, all those things, oh, what do they mean? Okay, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the webcam for a second so that it can focus on the, on the experiment. Uh, in this particular one, you don't have to do, you can just watch. Okay. Thanks for that. Can you see? That's the tube. Okay. And we had stuck two pencils in it. And what I showed last class was how to twist it. So we took this and we twisted it. And when we twisted it, what I want you to see is that the line that's here, that line becomes a, uh, a it kind of gets wrapped around and becomes a spiral. Right? Can you see the spiral? But I want you to notice something else. Look at each of the rectangles that are drawn. Okay, When I twist it, is it obvious to you that the rectangles have become parallelograms? Right? So that's the key thing. That's what we mean by saying that torsion locally. For small patches, it looks like simple shear. Can you see that? So rectangles becoming parallelograms. You can see that if I twist it very large amount, you can see that much better. Okay, so that's how it works. So from our point of view, we are going to actually look at this and we are going to figure out what's going to happen. The first thing that we need to do in order to calculate uh, how much shear strain and things like that are there, what we are going to do is we are going to actually measure the distances. So first thing is I'm going to measure the distance between these two pins. That's the length L. That is the that is the distance between the, the point where I'm holding it firm and the point where I'm twisting, that distance. The distance between this cross section and that cross section. So if I measure it out here, it turns out that it's about 9 inches. Okay, that's about 9 inches. So I can measure it out here and you can see that's about 9 inches. So the diameter of this thing, I'm sorry, the length, the L that we're going to use is 9 inches. That's the distance of separation. The radius that we are going to use depends upon the diameter of the shaft. So if I measure it this way, it's about, let's make sure, it's about two and a half inches diameter. So length is L is nine, width is two and a half inches. Okay. Now we are ready to do all the calculations. First thing we want to see is what does our angle of twist mean? So if I look at it from above, is it obvious to you that the two, the, the, let's see, ah, there you go. The two things are exactly lined up. That's zero degrees. Okay. Because the bottom is not twisted with respect to the top. Now I'm going to twist it. When I twist it, I can actually measure the angle. So I'm going to twist it. So can you see an angle opens up? And that's a 45 degree angle. Can you see it's along that 45 degree line there? So I've twisted it by 45 degrees. I can twist it some more. That's about 60 degrees, something like that. That's about 60 degrees. Okay. When I do 60 degrees and I look at this cross section, can you see how much it's deformed? Right. Can you see the parallelogram? So we want to figure out what's the tan of the angle made by the parallelogram. You know, the shear strain. So that's what our calculation tells us and that's what we are going to do next. Okay.